Hello everyone, I'm Steve and welcome to today's Retro Tech. We're going to do another installment, just going to be a quicker, shorter one uh, for this certain installment on our PVM that we're doing our capacitor replacement on. Last video you might have seen where we had taken the whole PVM apart, talked about the job that was upcoming, we documented all our capacitors, and the reason I'm doing this video today is I want to just kind of do a kind of shorter in-between where I talk about the tools I'll be using in this next part of the job. I'm going to again go through the steps a little bit more clearly and then the capacitors did arrive from the uh, Mouser, the company that I ordered the pro, uh, capacitors from. They all came in the mail today so I figured it would be a good chance to just take a quick look at them and you can see uh, what it looks like to have that many capacitors uh, you're going to have to replace. I mean I'm talking about almost 130 in total that are going to be replaced on this uh, monitor. So let's just go ahead and take a quick look. Let's take a look down here at the monitor broken down again. And you can see, right, metal scrap someone wrote on our monitor case here. So I'll clean this up a little bit more, um, get those stickers down there off. But the real thing I'm wanting to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you um, in the other video, but these rivets, you can just basically pull them apart but, and slip a screwdriver. I'll show you how to do that, but I'm going to take and break this down into two pieces um, on on the monitor shell. I'm going to break it in two pieces and then I'm going to actually repaint this. So uh, I do need some help. I wonder what you guys thought of maybe a good color would be on this. Uh, I was thinking about priming it and then making it maybe a gray to match the inside of the bezel on the monitor. I'll show you that in a second. Or maybe a black. I wasn't really sure which one would look better. So if you have an opinion on it, please let me know in the comments uh, because it, you know as long as it's in the next couple days before we get started on it. But you will see that. Again, let's move over here a little bit more. These are the boards where we're going to be recapping these two, you know, our neck board and then our main board here. And um, now I've had a lot of people asking me uh, and talking about, you know, why would you recap the whole board? It's not necessary. Or what do you think about recapping the whole board? Or look, there's really, um, it's not really any right or wrong way about it. You know, you don't have to replace them all. I'm doing that in this because I don't want to have to worry about any other maintenance in the future and I'm kind of doing to prevent anything from uh, going bad and maybe causing some damage to the board. It could just be something that is not even in use very much but the capacitor goes bad and leaks out in the board and causes some kind of problem. So this monitor itself is actually well over 20 years old. It's from 1996. While it's all disassembled I'm going to go ahead and do it. Now if this was a 2030 or one of those older models that was very large that has like four times as many capacitors, there's probably no way I'd um, rebuild it all unless I really had to and it was worth it. Um, basically putting about a thousand dollars worth of time into it. So anyway, let's go down here. Here's the monitor. And this was kind of the gray I was gonna try to match on in here in the bezel and then the number color and the Olympus branding and the buttons. I was gonna try to get that kind of a gray on the shell so it'd have a cooler look than the cream it does now. So those that's our monitor again. Let's go over here and we'll start looking at the tools that we're going to be using for this. And just have to bear with me on the camera. But um, we can start off here with the soldering iron. So this is a, a Hako and it is the FX888D. I've had this for about three years almost, maybe maybe two and a half. Uh, really solid unit, never gives me any trouble. Uh, just, I have got a couple extra spare tips for it that are pretty easily available. And um, but other than that, everything on it's been it just works really well. Uh, temperature control is nice and just a solid one for a good price. Um, I can't really remember how much this was, but it was really affordable and a lot cheaper than the uh, desoldering gun behind it which is in this very nice carrying case right here. I'll try to pick it up without dropping it, but this will be using a lot, and this is an amazing piece uh, or tool that will help. You hear that click? It, it just turns the soldering gun on, and it sucks in our solder in this chamber that I can easily remove, and it does an amazing job for quickly and safely removing capacitors um, and other components. And so... Those are going to be the two main things while I'm replacing the capacitors. I will have some other tools. Let's go ahead and take a look kind of down here. So I've got just some needle nose pliers in case I need to grab onto a capacitor and pull it out of a tight space. Uh, my multiple tool, a uh, little screwdriver, you never know when you need that. Here's my little uh, nips 
for anything, uh, trimming up components. And then I will use a lot of this uh, flux while I re-solder or solder back in, and it's a no-clean uh, flux. And um, I use it a lot because it's very helpful. It helps distribute your solder without uh, causing any troubles of... This is a solder I usually use most of the time. Now I don't just stick this big portion on the end into the soldering spot. I'll just put a little bit of a dab of this. I'll, I'll touch it to my soldering tip like this. As it's hot, I'll touch it like this and get some fresh solder on the tip here. And then I usually just quickly go over and push that against there. Maybe I'll add a top at the top of the tip up here a little bit extra if I need to, and then go in and dab it on the spot. That way uh, I don't oh, use too much solder. I can control how much I really need to get on there. Um, you can use a smaller applicator. That's fine too, or a smaller gauge. Um, that, that's not a big deal. This is rosin core again, so that helps uh, with your connection. makes it a little bit easier. So that's just a quick rundown of the tools. And the last thing I've got here is the box of parts. That's right, our... Capacitors came in the mail today. This is how it was. Lo it looked. It was just a 30, um, 30 packs of capacitors, 30 different types, and this is how you get when you get them. I mean, you just get them all sent. Each one's bagged individually. It's 30 bags. So what I'll do is I'll lay all these out uh, and and put them in in a row. And here's my data sheets too. It gives you nice data sheets saying all the statistics on every single part we ordered. Lots of that information and. Mouser again does a great job. You'll notice most of my caps are either going to be black, Nishan, or I use these other brands. I'll show you they're red, so they stand out when you change them. They're high quality too, and a newer brand um, that I've just decided to give a chance to, and they work really well on my past projects. So I've been using them a little bit more. Uh, but this is what you get, and uh, so the next step is just going to be. We're going to jump right into the job. I'm going to be set up to start desoldering and soldering back uh, capacitors into the board down there with the monitor, and that's going to be it. We're going to get ahead and get going on the job. You'll see the mo you'll see me. I'll replace a few capacitors, and you know, uh, talk about that, and and then we'll repaint that shell, and we'll put it back together in the next video. Thanks again for watching today, I'm, and I'm glad you stuck around for this quick update, and have a great day.